Hey guys, how's it hanging everybody? This is Storm Pow and welcome to yet another episode of Storm Pod. And today we are talking with Sacred Almighty. He is a YouTuber, a live streamer, and he's also one of the hosts of the Royal Round Table podcast and so, so much more. So I was really interested in interviewing Sacred because I wanted to learn a little bit more about him because I've noticed that he always has a very personal touch on his content. So it made me all the more gravitated towards interviewing him and learning a little bit more about him personally. So we talked about a variety of things. We kind of started out talking about distancing ourselves from social media due to some of the negative side effects of social media, but also talking about some of the positive side effects of social media and some of the different platforms, how they make us feel. Um, we talked about um, Animal Crossing and a couple other video game topics like that. And we also talked about this little virus that's going around. I don't know if you've heard about it or not, but there is a little, you know, little bug going around nowadays. So we talked about that a little bit and kind of how some of our opinions on certain things have changed. We also talked a little bit about the controversial return of um, the infamous YouTuber Nappy and uh, some some of the information that Sacred had regarding that and how this situation has affected him personally, being somebody who knew Nappy. Um, so overall, we talk about that and we also talk about some of the highlights of his YouTube career, talking about some of the best things that have happened to him throughout his time here and some of the best advice that he has to give. So it was a great experience. Hope you guys enjoy this episode of Storm Pod as much as I had fun recording it. And also be sure to check out Sacred on his YouTube channel. Check out his podcast as well, The Royal Round Table. Be sure to check them out and give them a listen. It's a couple of dudes talking about dude things and overall great things. Hey, even if you're not a dude, I think you'll find some stuff to enjoy in there. So overall, you guys, hope you enjoy this episode. And as always, if you want to get the best podcast experience whatsoever, be sure to follow my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash thestormpow because we do these episodes live every single week and by tuning in live, you not only get to listen to the episode about 48 hours sooner, for those of you who aren't good at math, that's like two whole freaking days, um, but not only that, do you get to interact with myself and the guest live before and after the show, so it's a lot of value that you get out of watching it live, and it's free, so be sure to tune in live at twitch.tv slash thestormpal, we also do some other awesome live streams there throughout the week, that is where all my live content is at, but also be sure to check out this channel here on YouTube if you're not already, as it's kind of a similar deal, you guys. You get to watch the video version of this podcast, and there's also lots of other good content, but if you're just an audio dude, that's fine, and we appreciate the hell out of you for doing that. Just be sure to subscribe or follow us or rate us on whatever platform that you do listen to us on to show some support to the show, and so that way you're notified of future releases. But anyway, guys, I will not take up any more of your time. Please enjoy this episode of storm pod with sacred first off you know i was thanking you just for being here earlier but especially given that that i know you're playing animal crossing so i really appreciate you taking the time off of animal crossing <laughs> for that i uh i actually think that that may have been a hindrance in finding somebody that was available for tonight of all nights <laughs> really no actually those videos those the, 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 i uploaded well, upload it twice today Mm -hmm. Those videos are like already recorded like two days ago. So oh, really? No problem. I really wasn't doing it. I like to book record a lot. So it's okay. like, oh, uh, I, I'm already like two weeks ahead of uploads. Damn. So I kind of just like, I'm just sitting here really. Damn, that, that must be like an amazing feel of release, honestly, a relief. Mm -hmm. it, it is because like. Only because I feel like there's not much time in the day to like mm -hmm. be able to like make videos and still stream on occasion. So I try to like be as ahead of videos as possible so people can still get the content they subscribe for while I also can do some streaming stuff on the side. Uh, and then sometimes I kind of go overboard. <laughs> Which I, um, I guess I lucked out because you're you seem like. Uh, one of the few people that like is is into Animal Crossing right now, but you weren't like super hyped for it. It didn't seem like. No, I. I those games aren't for me. <laughs> <laughs> those games are not. Those games, those type of, like so, it's a social simulation type of game, mm -hmm. and those aren't like my cup of tea. Like when it comes to like Sims, Animal Crossing, uh, certain stuff of that genre is just not for me. Ideally, I just like action in my game, but at the same time, it was like my friends love it. It's a new game. It's, you know, it's, it's, why it's like the first Animal Crossing game in like the last, what, seven years? Something like that. Yeah. Some seven or eight. So why not try to like give it a shot 
And I mean, it was it's cool. I mean, I'll probably go back to playing it sooner enough. I don't know. I don't know. It depends. It depends. It depends. Whenever I, I get actually, bored. Okay. Yeah, I've I've never played an Animal Crossing game. So like, I'm thinking about getting this one though, just because like, honestly, that is my type of game. Like, I love The Sims and stuff like that. But I don't know how I've, I've never really get like gotten an opportunity to play Animal Crossing. I guess I never really knew how much of like a social simulator it was. I was just like, oh, this is a game about furries or something. I was like, I don't know, <laughs> man. So so <laughs> the running joke for me is um. <laughs> <laughs> the running joke for me is that Animal Crossing is literally uh, the furry Sims. <laughs> like, that's exactly and, why I never messed with it. Yeah. And it was just like, why would anybody want to play this shit? Like, what's happening right now? And seeing so many people be so excited. And I'm like, how are you people this excited to sit here, log on to a game, do like two or three things and get off? Mm-hmm. Am I missing something? <laughs> right. And I gotta be surely and and yeah like granted again yeah i've never played it so my opinion is like 100 percent invalid but yeah i was always like yeah you know i i like how it like goes in real lifetime in a way but in the other mm-hmm. part of me i'm like that would feel like uh like some mobile game shit like uh you know all right you gotta wait like 12 hours for, i know it's not actually like that mm-hmm. i'm probably gonna get some animal crossing people like really pissed off but you can't okay. do that you, you, you never played it that's true they're so defensive for like they're they're so defensive about their video game. It's damn near like insecurity mm-hmm. that they'll be like uh, offensive as hell to you, despite you never playing an actual game in the series. So it's like, damn, like, can I at least tell you what it looks like from outside? Like, what's up? Like, this this looks weird as hell. It does. Look just like, weird no, as hell. fuck you. Like that video that went up uh today about Animal Crossing. The original title was Animal Crossing is a bad game. Just to get clicks. Uh-huh. <laughs> just to get clicks because it's not my it's not my cup of tea uh-huh. and in the first like minute i'm like this is not my type of game i don't know what you're looking for no but i was like you know what not every not every view is a good view so it's like you know what let me let me let me change the title up and let me uh be as honest as possible and try to be <sighs> moral yeah whatever that is your your video got me excited for it because like i was already planning on like all right this is the animal crossing game that i'm gonna get into like i'm gonna try it out and then like when i started watching your video i was like okay like he's actually like i was expecting you to be all you know oh great animal crossing's out i'm excited but like when you were like hey so this isn't normally my type of thing but i'm gonna try it out i was like okay like i i coming from my point of view having never played one i was like this is gonna be an opinion that like i can get into because like some people are just are like nostalgic obviously and that's cool Mm -hmm. they're like oh i love animal crossing obviously like no questions i'm gonna buy this new one but like i was like okay like you made it look pretty fun i was like okay you know like obviously i'm like this is gonna be you know like you said a a social simulation game but i don't know i'm gonna give it a shot i'm happy because uh because i know a lot of people uh it's weird because Animal Crossing, while it is Animal Crossing, it's also still like one of um one of the, one of the more jarring Nintendo franchises, I feel mm-hmm. like, because it's not a Mario where it's a regular ass platformer one time and it's a 3D platformer another time. It's not Pokemon where it's a turn based joint and they give you like a gimmick. It's not a Zelda. You know, it's, it's definitely not one of those heavy hitters. Uh, but it is a, a well-respected Nintendo franchise that just for me, I could never get into. I I, I just much rather spend my time shooting shit <laughs> and fighting stuff and listening to music. So it's an okay game. It, it's cool. It's I like it for what it, for what I play at, at for the thirty minutes forty five that I played it for. Uh-huh. Probably go back into it soon, but that's it. Okay. Um. So how how are you handling? quarantining like are you like loving it like or or are you just like wishing you could get outside or or are you just ignoring it (laughs) all three (laughs) all three actually um it's weird because like uh it's a good thing that people are taking it serious obviously there's some people who just aren't Mm -hmm. uh but for the smart people you know it's good to just be safe and just be cool i'm i'm already stocked up on food I've, I've I went grocery shopping like not even like oh two weeks before any of this shit happened. Uh-huh. So it's cool. Um, I'm 
all my family's good, everything, everything's fine. It's just people won't shut the fuck up about it now, right? Like it's just like, oh shit, okay, yeah, we're in quarantine. Okay, <laughs> it's like <laughs> y'all people should be happy, you know. Like, you know, it's weird. Like I feel like people should be happy that like you know the companies now. There's so many companies that are coming out like, hey, we know this shit is not cool. You know, mm-hmm. I saw some people say they've taken a couple hundred dollars off people's rent. They've mm-hmm. taken, um, they that as some people like stop the some companies stopped evictions for people you know who can't make the payments or whatever. Some shops are closed. That I, it's like you know you would think people would be cool about this stuff if they're not sick. You know, just just be good. But it's like at the same time, I understand that people are worried. People are. Um, panicking i just wish that like people just shut up about it you know just wait till we get something uh official i feel like everybody just is kind of rushing this thing more so than the people uh with the power you know with with the yeah. knowledge of it all really because i i agree because it's like there's so little that we actually know about this stuff like everybody mm-hmm. is a fucking scientist though on twitter you know what i mean right like man <laughs> it'd be making me hate twitter so much dude yeah Dog, I hate Twitter. So I'm like, much. I'm like, I wish you guys had more free time and you guys weren't on Twitter all the time, like just dude, getting me depressed, you know. Dude, real talk, I always said this. I'm like, imagine, I'm like, imagine if, you know, all that Googling you did, imagine if all that um all that fake studying that you swear you did, right? Imagine if you actually put that into something like creative. You know, like just, you know, put it, 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 it could be like a new career path for you. Like, oh, shit, if you're this interested to try to correct somebody on Twitter, why not go into it? Like, why not even, why not, you know, why not look into it for yourself? Because this shit isn't going to last forever. Yeah, go be like an actual scientist or virologist yeah, or whatever. go learn something. Go read a book. Go go read something. You know, mm-hmm. don't just sit there and just try to be right. You know, you can't be somebody on the internet and not somebody in real life. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, because cause I'm with you because I like... I'm glad that, you know, companies at, like are actually starting to take it seriously to to an extent, you know, like at first mm-hmm. I was like, I don't really know. I, I was definitely one of those people like when it first started happening, that was like, uh, like, shut up, dude. You know, like it's just it's just another flu. The media is trying to scare us. And now I'm like, OK, mm-hmm. some stuff's happening. I'm minute. like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe maybe we should be a little bit concerned. And and right. now I then I, I went through a small phase where I was like we're all going to fucking die. And now I think I've met in like this happy How did you middle. get to that point? Twitter. <laughs> Twitter and just scaring Dog, me. Dog, I want you to know, I hate Twitter with a passion. Yes. I hate going on there and I hate seeing like uh, opinions from people who just aren't. I just feel like Twitter is the platform for people with no type of like uh, background. Mm-hmm. You know, like, like, like I don't like going on Twitter and seeing these fucking Harvard professors give an opinion on shit they just they they think they know about, but then you go into like the mentions and you see like five paragraphs of people correcting them. Yeah. But then that tweet is the viral tweet. So yeah. it's like, who what what are we doing here? Yeah. That's weird. Then then it's like, if it's not that, it's like people like trying to push this like, oh, you can't force your beliefs on other people while still forcing their beliefs on other people type of narrative they mm-hmm. got going on, whether it's about like political views, uh, sexuality, um, entitlement in some areas. Uh, there, there's like, uh, there's obviously race and it's just like, why, <laughs> what are we doing, dude? It is weird. I like going on Instagram a lot more than I do uh, Twitter as of recent because Instagram is just like, it's just pictures. Mm-hmm. I like going on Tumblr for the exact same moments. Like it's just like it's just pictures. It's if I cared about you know what people had to say, I'd go talk to my friends at this point. I noticed, um, yeah, I noticed like when I was doing just a little bit of research to get some like stuff to talk about here tonight. Yeah, I noticed that you have an active Tumblr and all that stuff, and I thought that that was kind of interesting because not a lot of people still use Tumblr. Like, not saying anything wrong with that, obviously, but like I. I clicked on it and I was like, oh, like this is active and everything. So, so, I mean, that makes sense though, um, with it being mostly visual because like, um, I was listening to Dax Shepard, he's got a podcast and he mm-hmm. interviewed the CEO of Instagram and like, he was kind of talking about the differences between Instagram and Twitter 
Um, and, and basically he said that he feels like Twitter is a, is a pretty negative platform. Whereas like when he goes on Instagram, he's like happier. And I think it might be for similar reasons, like with Tumblr, just because it's visual, you know, like people. Oh well, like, yeah. That's something what I do. It's negative mm -hmm. as shit. If I go, if I go on, if I go on Twitter right now, I'll do it right now. Fuck it. I'll do it right. <laughs> right now is the proof of point. That ass, the first thing I see, 34-year-old Canadian man dies of coronavirus. Recently visited Disney World. Damn. Nobody it's... wants to see that. Like, bro, yeah. if I go back on it again, let's scroll down the timeline. Resident Evil 3, that's cool. Uh, here's a long-ass paragraph about Animal Crossing and how people should let people enjoy things. Oh, brother. Why like, do we have to val why do we have to validate the shit that we enjoy for other people? I was about to say, yeah. What's up? Man. And it's there, just negative, dude. I'm there's good a, on that. There's always two ways to spin an article. Like, so I don't know if you've heard about like Amazon, how they are basically like um prioritizing essential deliveries right now. You know, mm -hmm. like if you're if you're ordering like stuff for a baby or like food or you know things like that it's going to get prioritized over me ordering you know some fucking stupid shit some stickers or some shit you know um but like so i saw an article that put it as like you know amazon is prioritizing essential items during this time of crisis and then i saw like literally the exact same subject but on a different website and it was like it was labeled as uh, uh, your Amazon Prime membership is about to become useless, and I'm like, the fuck do you mean? You can use it now to get. It's actually. I never thought. Yeah. I never thought having priorities was a bad thing. I mean, yeah. I'm, it's so confusing. People are so weird. It's yeah. so weird, dude. But at the same time, am I really, uh, am I really contributing to the cause by judging other people? You know what I'm saying? That's fair. It's just best. To, it's just best to keep. I don't know. It's just best to keep opinions, you know, to yourself and just mm -hmm. be your own person. I feel like a lot of people just aren't secure in themselves a lot or their their interests and their beliefs. So it's kind of just like, oh, here, I'm going to go on the social media, uh, yeah. type this long ass paragraph, click tweet and just let people, if they agree with me, you know what I'm saying? Agree with me or not. But it's just like, whatever. For me, it's just, I don't care most of the time unless I ask for it. You can believe what you want to believe or do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. fine. It's like, it's like, yeah, you, you, people go on there, especially on like Twitter, they post this long thing and they are hoping for validation. They're hoping for the people that do agree with them, you know, to, to come in and back them up and be like, oh yeah, you're exactly right. You know, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, they're, they're not really looking to have their opinion changed or anything like that. That's the dangerous part. They're just, they're exa that's they're exactly, um, there's a viral, t almost all viral tweets have like uh hidden tweets. Like, you know, that little hidden tab on like, mm -hmm. the bottom right of it, you click that shit and it's all tweets opposing what they were talking about. Yeah. And it's like, what are we doing here? Mm -hmm. Cause that's kind of, uh, that's not really very healthy in my, so like, I, I love hearing other viewpoints genuinely. I know a lot of people will like bullshit and say Agreed. that they do, but I'm like, cause there have been many times where I've believed something pretty firmly and then somebody like completely just, just annihilates me. And then I'm like, you know what? Like <laughs> I can't even be mad about that because that was like a good point, you know? And so yeah. sometimes it's good. Um, that was one of the other things that they talked about in that interview with the the Instagram CEO. They were like, talking about how it is kind of dangerous in a way. Um, it makes sense, but a lot of social media websites, they notice like tweets that you like and that you engage with and they show you more of that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously it makes sense because it's like, you know, I'm not, uh, eventually, you know, you see people quit social media, like leave Twitter, leave Instagram, leave Facebook. And almost always the reason why is because they're like, oh, it was just so negative. Like it just bummed me out. Like I, I never felt good. So they're like, let's show you only posts that you like. And then you're going to keep using our service. And like, that makes sense. But also it's a really great way to just get like tunnel visioned where you, you're never exposed to any like differing viewpoints or anything like that. You know, it's mm -hmm. kind of a, that's, um, that's kind of weird too. Mm -hmm. Cause like, then they'll suggest you some shit because somebody else liked it. Mm -hmm. And it'll be like, uh, like on Twitter, like you'll, you could dead ass be just scrolling through it and you'll see like a random ass tweet that somebody liked. And it's mm -hmm. like, why am I seeing this? I'm, I don't, 
they didn't even retweet it. They, <laughs> they didn't retweet it. They didn't quote it. They literally just liked it. And it's like, why? I know. Why did I see this? I, I hate that because it's like, you know, I like something and I'm like, I chose to like it instead of retweet because I didn't necessarily want my followers to like, I didn't want mm-hmm. to bother them with this. I enjoy it. I want to show my appreciation, but like, I don't think that my followers are going to give a shit about it. So that's why I'm liking it. And then I'm like, they're probably still going to Man, see this anyway. I liked some girls, uh, only fans promo. Uh huh. Cause it was fire. I like that <laughs> shit. Next thing I know, give it like maybe like 15 minutes. I'm getting dragged in my mentions. Damn, bro, you horny as fuck. I'm like, you're right, but damn, nigga, why did you even see that? How did you see that? Right. It's like, you, you're going to act like you're not also horny as fuck? <laughs> you know? Like, what's good? Like, they're yeah. recommending this shit to you because you seem to like this too. So it's like, uh, what you got to say for yourself, you know? What's up? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of annoying that way. And then I'm like, oh, so now do I have to like think about what I'm liking on? Yeah, I mean every you know, everything yep. is Yeah. I made a I made a whole other uh personal Twitter. I don't follow nobody besides my main. Um and I just tweet shit. I just I just tweet shit on there. That's a good and idea. And I see like I still see like uh my friends like likes and shit because you know, if when you follow somebody you're also recommended like who they follow, what those people like and what they retweeted. So it'd be like, a, it'd be like, oh, here's what you missed today. And it's like, am I following them on this account? I'm like, uh, <laughs> no, why do I didn't ask what's, what's happened? Yeah. And it's like, all right, I'm gonna just, at this point, it just, it just comes down to limiting your social media intake and just knowing when too much is too much and just knowing when to dip out, uh, I've just learned to practice that. And there's other social media for everything. You know, I just like I just like pictures now. Yeah. I, I just like my interests. I like what I like, you know. I think I feel better, yeah, when I'm just looking at pictures. It's harder for me to like I never really like leave Instagram or something and I'm like, man, I'm fucking depressed now, but I definitely leave Twitter like that sometimes, you know? Um mm-hmm. like mental health wise, like I'm I'm fascinated with it, but like I I have a lot more anxiety than I do depression, but like the other night I swear to God, like, so anxiety for me is more of like a slow, constant thing. Like I barely ever have like full on anxiety attacks or anything, but like, I'm always Mm -hmm. a little anxious. Whereas depression is like the opposite. Like most of the time I consider myself not depressed at all, but there will be like one night where I'm just like, God damn, I'm fucking sad. And like the other night was like that, but it was definitely because of like some social media shit. I was just on there and it was like you said, I get on Twitter and just everything is just how fucked up things are. And I was just like, mm-hmm. this is not good. So I just, yeah, I had to do, do exactly like what you said, take a kind of a night off. I'm like, I'm just going to watch some Netflix, like have a beer and, you know, just kind of relax. But yeah, sometimes you just got to get away. People got to, people underestimate, you know, how um, powerful social media is, especially nowadays. Like, you know, it's, it's so weird um, that that's like, that that's I feel like it's something that's being neglected, but at the same time, like acknowledged. But I guess not to the extent where it should be. Mm-hmm. Where it's like mental health definitely um play or mental health via social media is one of those things where you'll see a lot of like uh things on social media that are either detrimental or like, you know, positive to how you think and positive to how you just feel. And that shit like really does kind of like get to you somehow i know for me um i didn't really start feeling any type of like um any type of like pressure anxiety all that extra stuff until i got into social media heavy Mm -hmm. like i didn't start i didn't start doing that till i was like what 16 and before all that i was a regular ass kid i was not doing i wasn't doing anything yeah i was just like I, i was fine with how life was i was happy naive at some point but um i guess you could say ignorance is bliss sometimes it's cool to it's cool i mean sometimes it's cool to be in your own world you know Mm -hmm. and not have to worry about um what other people are doing and how negative other people's lives are because it's like you know just the other day i was um i was on twitter and i saw like a uh like one of one girl that i follow um she was basically talking about like uh how she has nobody how she felt like she has nobody how she's really doing this, you know, how does she's really doing her life by herself. 
and how like you know even her cries for help get ignored and shit like that and it's just like damn like you feel bad for them but it's like shit (laughs) damn it's heavy stuff yeah and it's just like you know she was talking about killing herself and shit i'm just like bro like this is shit dude but you gotta be you know you gotta be aware that that shit does happen like this is the real world you know Mm-hmm. People use social media as an outlet sometimes, as a um, as a a means of escape, you know, from their everyday, every day, you know. And some people use it for business. Some people use it for I don't know connections, friendships, uh, bonds, uh, hobbies. You know, it, it's it's such a powerful tool. It's just how you use it at this mm-hmm. point. And I feel like you know if you're gonna be uh, a content creator or an influencer, you have to learn to separate, you know, your business t- from your personal, which is, you know, what I try to, I've been trying to do as a recent, because I know as like, as a younger, as a kid using social media and using YouTube um, and just using, you know, all, all the platforms or whatever, it was, uh, it was weird. It was a uh, really weird, you know, seeing, you know, these depressed ass kids, come up you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. and they're on social media talking about their lives to the point where they got so accustomed to it and they damn near wonder why like and i don't want to be that guy they damn near wonder why their platform or their content creation doesn't stick yeah like i've seen a lot of people uh vent it could be like the most innocent venting a session in the world, right? On social media, it could be like a, maybe the three or four paragraph thread or whatever. And you'll see like a lot of people interact with it, but then you'll notice like their, the perception of people towards them changes. Like you'll see like, oh, he's a cool person. Then he'll have a mental breakdown or some shit episode on Twitter. And that, that he's a good person goes from, oh, he's entitled or, oh, he's ungrateful mm-hmm. or, oh, he's he's negative all the time or, oh, this is that and a third. It's happened to me at some point. And it's just like, damn, like you, it, it makes the, it makes that person feel like they can never open up to people sometimes. And it's like, shit, we really are kind of trapped, you know, as uh as uh, content creators and as like influencers and shit, sometimes it's, it sucks. Yeah, you know. Um. So, so that gets me to kind of thinking. We've talked, you know, a lot about how like Instagram and Twitter and and Tumblr mm-hmm. even like affect your mental health and and kind of getting into it a little bit now. But would you say like being a content creator, aside from the the feeling trapped, like you know, do you get like enough positivity out of it to kind of as far as your mental health is concerned, not just necessarily like, oh, do you enjoy it or whatever, but I'm talking, I guess, when you like upload a video and it, it gets, you know, lots of views or lots of engagement or you do a tweet and it blows up, something like that. I mean, y- you know, there's things that, that go in our brain, like, I don't know, it, it fucking endorphins. I'm not going to pretend to be a scientist here, but, you know, like, mm-hmm. does does all that do like a lot for you or does that, cause I know some people where it's like video could pop off and get a million views. And I, I literally don't think they would like give a shit, you know, or, or I mean, where, where are you at with that? Maybe somewhere in the middle or, or do you get a lot of high off of that? I don't get satisfaction out of it. Mm-hmm. Like if a video does good, it's like, damn, I want another one to do good. If, yeah. another, if a tweet blows up, it's like, damn, I want another one to blow up. You know, I it, it's like, you know, as a, as a content creator, you kind of want to like, you want to be seen, you know, like mm-hmm. you, you want to, nobody wants to sit here and, um, upload a 25 minute fucking video or a, a 12 minute video that you spent hours on just to get like 10 views. Nobody, no, you, 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 you're literally, there's no person on this planet, nobody that if you were to do YouTube right now, or you were to do Twitch, or you were to do uh, even art, you know, art, music, nobody wants to sit here and do this stuff for five people. Granted, you know, it's cool that people are looking for you, and people, some people see that, but you know, who doesn't want the world to see them? You know, who doesn't want, who doesn't want to feel important or special to some people? Like, my high comes from people telling me like, hey, my guy, 
your videos for the last couple months. Just recently, actually, I, I'll get the tweet. I'll get the actual comment for you. Literally, not even like two seconds ago. Dead ass. Let me show you this shit. I'm excited. Let me show you this. <laughs> watch this. Watch this. It's like, hey, Nick. To be honest, if it wasn't for you, I probably wouldn't be on the planet right now. If I didn't die from suicide, I would only have the I would only have the doctors play your YouTube videos. So whenever you may feel like being a YouTuber may not be right for you, remember how much of an impact you have on your viewers. Damn. Yeah. How does that not that that's actually really really legit that's the type of shit that you want to get your like creator high from like who doesn't who mm -hmm. doesn't want that like that's nick like the fact that like my i don't know my 15 20 minute video of me playing a fucking video game can like do that that's saying something and you know it, it's one of those things where it's like you know i never get satisfaction out of it because it's like there are more people like that. There mm -hmm. are more people who just want to just watch videos. There are more people who who just, you know, use this as an outlet or whatever. And it's like, you know, if me having fun and playing video games can um can um help in some way, shape, or form while also I guess being an outlet for me expressing my interest mm -hmm. it's a win-win for everybody you know if if this game that i grew up on and loved utterly right gets a crazy amount of views and people like it and that video just so happened to be the one video that people stuck with because that was like their first introduction to me that was um you know the video that maybe hit them at the right time you know what i'm saying or yeah. maybe maybe just like just, just it just was there it's great. It's so, great. I, that, I, that's the, where the kick comes from. That's where the high comes from. It's, it's never it's never getting enough of that feeling. It's never getting um, satisfied with just whatever you put out. It's always wanting to advance. It's always wanting to um, make more dope shit so maybe it can hit somebody um, who is depressed or maybe it can hit somebody who just wants to be entertained. Mm -hmm. You know, who, like I said, at the end of the day, you don't, who doesn't want to be seen? You know, when it comes to putting yourself out there, you know, there's a there's a lot of risk that comes with putting your face out there. There's a lot of risk that comes with putting, um, I don't know, P.O. boxes, your interest, uh, expressing yourself. There's a lot of negative ass people that will try to shut your shit down. Yeah. And you have to learn to say, fuck them. <laughs> so, somebody out there likes Animal Crossing and then I'm over there like, nah, that shit is furry that sims shit trash. and then that they're... shit trash <laughs> and you gonna get attacked like wait a minute i was expressing my opinion it's like yeah. no fuck you it's like okay never mind right you know because obviously this is for them <laughs> you you gotta be able to you gotta be able to take you know take somebody disagreeing with you or disagreeing you know it's just kind of part of it like being out there mm -hmm. on the but no i i completely agree because yeah it's like obviously every creator you watch wants to be seen or else they wouldn't be doing it they would just be right. you know playing the video game by themselves not recording it not streaming it or whatever you know some people it, it's definitely more of a more of a concern than others but but that's you know really cool like having those stories like that you know with with the the person that commented out to you and i think that one thing that i noticed whenever i was kind of like going through some of your videos i think one thing that you do that that i think probably contributes to people having a connection like that and it's a really small thing but I noticed it after like watching a couple videos in a row. I was like at the beginning of it seems like all your videos or at least all your more recent ones, you you have like at least for like a few seconds, you will have like an in-person shot. Like the whole screen is you. It's not just like, you know, a corner, like a face cam. You're like mm -hmm. literally in one of them, you just said hi. And then like it went to the and game. And it into the video. <laughs> yeah. 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 I like that. I like doing that. I, I, I don't know. I just... Simple shit like that. It it just mm -hmm. it just helps. I feel like sometimes. Yeah, cause like some of them were longer than than others. Like in the Animal Crossing one that you uploaded today, you like went a little bit more in depth, talked about like, hey, so Animal Crossing ain't really my thing, blah blah blah, and like went into it. But mm -hmm. yeah, some of them were really short, and like I think that in and of itself is something that probably like gets your viewers a little bit more like connected with you, other than just your content. I, I, I was kind of curious if that was like a conscious decision or if it just like happened. You just did it once or twice and you were like, this this works. I, I kind of just did it. I um, <laughs> I do. I, I, honestly, you know, sometimes um, 
I think uh, as content creators, we kind of get so uh, caught up in content creating that we forget to know when to step back and become a fan of somebody else. Mm-hmm. And so recently, I want to say like last year, um, I found a lot of YouTubers that I actually uh, thoroughly enjoy watching and just study how they present their videos. And they're a lot more, obviously, a lot more established. They have like a million subscribers or whatever, but it's how they formulate their videos. And it's like there are a lot more personal content creators to where the game is kind of just like a backseat medium Mm -hmm. where it's like, oh, shit, here's, I don't know, here's like a 13, 15, 16 minute video, 20 minute maybe of like this guy cut commentary. Where it's like, he'll go the entire video chopping up the dry ass parts to where it's literally just him talking. And it could be like a funny moment, an information uh, get driven moment. It could just be a reactionary moment. It could be something. And just seeing people like take those and just seeing how the people respond to it. It's like, this is really... For the YouTuber and not the the video game itself or the video topic or whatever. It's really that person that drives the video. And it's like, I think for for a while, um, I kind of just now started to like branch out of like my own solidary content. Like I used to do nothing but Pokemon for the longest. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was just like, you know, I kind of want to like branch out and do my own thing and just kind of just express myself and put more Nick out there. Um and that's that. And then I've noticed that I guess my interest kind of just like started to like uh, differentiate from the people who were already subscribed to me. And, you know, when you take sacrifices like that, you got to know when to like, you know, when to just give up that notion of everybody's going to love what you're into and just accept that you're going to be driving in a whole new audience. Yeah. So it's like, damn, while, yeah, me uploading Pokemon, you know, only can get the most views. It's like, am I going to have the most fun with this? Is this all I want to do? Is this all, you know, like, is this, is this where I'm going to get the most press? Like, it, I'm more than just the content, mm-hmm. you know? And at some point, you don't want the content to take over the person. And so that's why I feel like a lot of people get trapped in their own content sometimes. So yeah. it's like, uh, I'd much rather somebody subscribe for me than whatever it is I'm known for to them where it's like oh they'll see a Pokemon video okay click his YouTube channel if they see I don't know Resident Evil 3 or The Last of Us 2 or Final Fantasy 7 or Wind Waker or some other shit right and they're like oh I really like his Pokemon stuff but I'm not too much of a fan of this other stuff they're more than likely either going to subscribe and watch only the Pokemon stuff when it's uploaded or they're not going to subscribe in general. And I'd much rather them not subscribe because it's not always going to be what you want to see. Mm-hmm. You know? And as a creator, you have to learn to control your channel, control your own uh, your own narrative, control what you want yourself to become. And that's I feel like that's just hard for a lot of people, especially now they get so... They grow, you know? Yeah. People people grow content create it's weird. I was what 16, 17 when I said I was gonna do Pokemon only, right? And here I am, 22. I grew out of Pokemon. I can I can accept that, you know. I grew out of Pokemon. Um I want to be known for more variety content. Um, you know, I want to be Nick, I want to be myself and not the content that these people subscribe to me for. And, you know, it, it came with a lot of like battling internally, like, hey, you're going to have to take a dip in views. You're going to have to take a dip in money. You're going to have to take a dip in um in eyes on you until you can fully be yourself, you know. And I think or you can not, not, not be yourself, but like you can bring in the people who give a fuck about you. Yes. For you being yourself, you know? And it's an uphill battle, but you know, I, I, I never backed away from a challenge before a day in my life. Damn. So 
I mean, and I think ultimately it's good. Um, you know, it is scary and it is risky when you've got these people that are coming to you for Pokemon or for whatever. And then you're like, I'm gonna try something mm-hmm. different. But the people that will stick around and the people that will come, those are going to be your really, really loyal fans. You that's know? the core. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's the core. That's the core audience. That's the core fan base. Um, I mean, there's not much else to say. They're the, they're the backbone. Really. They're the guys that get the videos to blow up. Mm-hmm. You know, they're yeah. the guys that, Oh shit, he's doing this. Leave a like. Even if I don't yeah. fuck with it, they'll still leave a like. Exactly. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna watch this through, like it. You know, I'm gonna leave a comment. I might even hell, I might even share it with somebody just because like I, I like this dude, you know? And Yeah, cause they cause they understand that while they might not like it, you know, because that person like it, it's like, oh shit, you know. Obviously I want this guy to succeed. I'm going to help this video out so he can get that audience for those people. Mm-hmm. It ain't even gotta be me. But people don't see that people don't see um a lot of like content creation as like a group effort anymore. I feel like a lot of people look at like channels as just that person and that's it. But no, it's a group effort, you know? Mm-hmm. It's not it's not just the YouTuber. It's the YouTuber and the fan base. It's not just the fan base, it's the YouTuber. You know, you have to learn when to lead sometimes. You have to know when to say no, you know? Mm-hmm. And especially and Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> you go ahead go ahead this uh, is you oh uh, no 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 uh, i was just gonna say i feel like even more so now like having a community is really really important especially with streaming like especially mm-hmm. with streaming because like i can i can watch like a 10 15 20 minute long youtube video if uh even if I don't necessarily like like the guy that's in it, in it, if I like the game he's playing or something like that, you know, kind of goes both ways. Like if I really like the person that's commentating or if I really like the game, I can do that. But like mm-hmm. for for to watch like a two hour long stream, I've got to like the guy that is really doing fuck it. with that person. Yeah. And I got to like his community. So, yeah. Yeah, that was it. I um, I think uh, I actually started getting back into uh, watching. Uh, like I said, you, you got to learn when to take a step back and become a fan of people, mm-hmm. and just you know watch how watch the method to the madness, damn near, and just watch how people cook sometimes. And I can say the people that you gravitate to more are obviously the people that um, you know have the same humor, have the same type of like you know morals and goals as you. But then sometimes it's cool to step out, you know, step out of your comfort zone and try to like, you know, get into other people's stuff. I've actually gotten um gotten to be a part of some of my friends' community by just collabing with them or whatever. So like anybody watching, collaborations are very, very important mm-hmm. as a YouTuber, especially a small one. Um you a hundred percent definitely um will need to collaborate with people who are in your uh, stratosphere of YouTube, whether it's you know personality wise, humor, content, anything, you have to know when to um, you have you have to know when you're not too good for somebody, mm-hmm. damn near, you know, because some people will be prideful and be like, oh no, fuck that, I can do that shit by myself. No, you can't. It's me. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> it's me. I'm niggas. Uh, <laughs> And some people will be like, you know, some people will be shameless with it. Like, fuck it. Like, I, I want you to help me, mm-hmm. you know? And it's up to you to be like, damn, do I really want to help this person out? Or, you know, if you if you fuck with them like that, you fuck with them like that, you know? And that's just, you know, people got to remember that we're humans first, you know? Mm-hmm. I get that we're all trying to reach, like, some crazy um, some crazy goal and some crazy milestones by, from people that we've seen do it before us. But like, you know, those people, you see the end result. Those people pretty much had to do the exact same thing. Yeah. No, yeah, it definitely, you collaboration, like you said, is key. Like we were talking before we went live, like, um, you know, when, when I first met like Omega Pro, that was like one of the first collabs that I did uh, with YouTube, you know, when I met him and then of course Kagi and Toasty and all them. And like, we did all kinds of shit together years ago you know Mm -hmm. and like they are literally still friends to this day like er, like literally 
like I think an hour or less than two hours ago for sure. Like I was just like in a discord thing with Kagi and Toasty, like while Kagi's sitting there playing Uncharted and we're just chilling, you know, it's because not only like, mm -hmm. will you make friends with people that will like, you'll continue to do projects with and you'll continue to collab and you'll continue to grow with, but like you'll make friends, you know, um, some people are going to be a one-time collab, but, you know, ultimately, like, you know, some people a couple times, but then, yeah, every now and then you're going to, like, really click. But all you got to do is go out there and ask, you know, and, and shoot your shot. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's been huge to be able to collab with people, but I, I completely agree, you know. And it is interesting that, that you point out, like, oh, we're all people because it sounds like it would be implied, but it's really not. You know, sometimes you do, uh, especially. You got to say it. Mm-hmm. Like you, some people get lost in this. You see a channel and you're, you only see them as the creator, not as the person behind it. But it's like everybody started somewhere, you know? Mm -hmm. So odds are the person that you're reaching out to, like they've been where you were, they, you know, so, so it, 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 it does need to be said actually. And that's interesting. Um, it comes from acknowledging it too. A lot of people just don't care. Mm -hmm. I feel like, I feel like, uh, sympathy and, Empathy are like uh, lost traits for people, unfortunately, sometimes. And uh, I don't know, dude. It's it's weird. I just wish people were people and people cared mm -hmm. more than I, I wish people showed they cared more than just saying it. Yeah, sometimes. And uh, like what I'll say too. Um, the first time that I did YouTube, I was in high school, and I. You know, this kind of goes back to what we were talking about getting known for one thing and all that stuff. I did Dragon Ball Z videos and I had like 50,000 subs, which at the time, like I felt, you know, like was huge and all that stuff. Now, I'm not going to lie. I had gotten a little bit cocky about it, you know, just because I'm like, man, I'm like 15, 16, whatever the fuck, you know, and all this Talk stuff, your shit. <laughs> you know, and and uh, it's okay to feel yourself, my G, you know, um, it's when you go overboard, you know, when you project it towards others, where it gets toxic. Exactly. I, I would hope I never got to that point, but you know, definitely like I was, I was like, I'm, I'm tough shit, blah, blah, blah. And then anyway, it got burnt out because you know, my, my viewers, you know, I felt like only wanted to watch the Dragon Ball. But if I had done like what you were talking about earlier and just like been more adamant about what I wanted to do, then I think people would have seen that. But instead, like I just, I gave up way too quick. I was just like, nah, it's not worth the loss in views and stuff. I'm out. And then, you know, anyway, I've come back and like going back to square one again has been by far the most humbling experience like of my life because I'm like back at the grind again. You know, there, there were a lot of my friends, my channel was like way bigger than theirs at the time, but now they theirs is like by tenfold bigger than mine. And so it's because they stuck around, you know, they, they worked hard. They went through the hard times and stuff where I just kind of wavered. And then now I'm back and, and it's, it's been very humbling. And I, I think that that is going to be huge for me long-term as far as like YouTube, because it's like, I think without sometimes getting your shit pushed in, whether it's completely starting over or at the very least, like taking a loss in your community. Maybe you tried doing something different and some people, you know, kind of left. I think, I think everybody needs that to happen to them one time. Cause I swear they will come mm -hmm. out a better creator. They're going to be like way more focused on making good community driven content, but also they're going to understand again, what it's like to be at, you know, the bottom starting over. So I think that's, that's actually what happened to me. Oh Yeah. I think, uh, I think, uh, it's weird. I, uh, you can ask any, I would say any long time viewer of mine and they'll tell you that I've gotten better just as a content creator. Mm -hmm. Um, whether it's editing, commentary, just visuals. Um, cause back then, obviously the demand for stuff, you could just, for me, where I'm from, you could just jet that ass, just drag and drop and be good. That's your <laughs> video for today. But yeah. now it's like, you know, damn near dissecting a video, like footage and shit, trying to keep all the moments or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's making sure you kind of exaggerate those moments and you kind of bring those things to life and you try to put so much more showcase on them than, um, than any dead space could fill, honestly. 1, I'd much rather a short, I'd much rather a short and edited video than, um, a long, dry video that I'm not going to watch for like five minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that video is like 45 minutes long. I'm not going to watch this shit, dude. But Click. 
You're exactly right. Cause yeah, make, like, make content you want to watch. That's it. If, if you watch any video of like a really successful YouTuber, that's the advice they give like 100%, like especially your people that have been around a long, long time before the, you know, the algorithm was such a thing. And you think they be lying. Mm -hmm. Like you, like you think like, there's no fucking way this shit works. And it's like, dog, they be telling you like the keys and it's like, there has to be something in all when it comes to like success on YouTube, all this shit comes from just like, you know, hitting the right uh, keywords, hitting the right algorithms, hitting the right, you know, luck damn near. But at the end of the day, like the people are going to stick around for you and only you, you know, it, it's, it's like, do you see, do you think, Jacksepticeye's channel would be Jacksepticeye's channel without Jacksepticeye. Hell no. <laughs> do you think do you think people would be waiting for another John Tron video without John Tron? Right. No. percent No, like that's not that's not like that's not how that works and you ask them like, "Hey, what what, what do you do?" You know, like what 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 it is that like that how did you get to this point? How did you reach this? What What did you do? Show me, right? And they'll sit there and they'll tell you. I, first and foremost, be yourself. Make content you want to watch. And just hope that it works. The right people mm -hmm. will find their way to you. Yeah. And it's like, damn. Okay, cool. Now what? Now you focus on building a community. Now you focus on building a actual channel. Fuck it. You know, we're here. Right. You want to, if, if it, it I, I told myself this shit a while ago, I was like, you know, I'm going to have to accept that, you know, not every subscriber of mine is going to fuck with the content that I upload. That's perfectly fine. I don't mind having 150,000 dead subs when I have a million subscribers that are active. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Think about it like that. Think about it like, oh shit, me branching out can be a lot more, a lot more, a blessing. It can be a blessing in disguise where it's like, hey, that little dead space that like you get no traffic, that you get like no uh, eyes on you for a little bit, could lead up to a boom, and all of a sudden you're out of there. Mm -hmm. You know, all of a sudden there's here's a viral video, here's two viral videos, here's three, but you would have never done that had you stick to the same thing. You just be doing whatever the flavor of that month is. Next flavor of that month. Next. But it'd be all centered around the exact same subject. The the flavor of the month is an interesting thing. And it's like, we think about it sometimes only as like, oh man, you know, like Pokemon or Dragon Ball or whatever. It's like, all right, this is what I got known for. I got to keep doing this. But one thing too, it, it can be a really good thing to shake your, your stuff up and diversify your content, diversify your audience. Because, you know, not everybody's always going to be interested in that. You know, like, so not only, like, I mean, eventually... Pokemon may not be popular. I mean, that sounds crazy, but it might not be. Or or at the very least, your viewers may grow out of it, you know? And then at that point, I mean, obviously, if you're still into it, then keep doing it. But it's like, you've got to be adaptable or, or at least maybe like the type of content that starts becoming popular may not work. Because like, like you said, man, I literally remember video editing used to be like drag and drop. Like I would just record, all right, here's me doing this match here. And here's like one long commentary. But now it's like you said, it's jump cuts. It's, you know, cool editing. I got to put some music and some sounds. And it's good because like mm -hmm. content's gotten a lot better than it used to be. But at the same time, like, man, it is way less like anybody can just pick this up and do it. You've got to really like be able to put some time into it, put some creativity. Like not only is it you in the the video, like your personality, but like you got to put your own like spin on the, the actual creation of it too, you know? So mm -hmm. it's, it's good because like I said, the, the content we consume is better, but man, it, uh, it definitely requires much more thought than it used to. Like, I think it's harder to just be like, all right, well, I guess it's time to, crank out a video today like you know i guess i'm just gonna play this game i used to hate being like that i mm -hmm. definitely was like that dude like oh shit i gotta wake up and record oh brother yeah and it's just like whatever and then there's like the i guess like as youtube began to get worse when it came to money wise it was like why am i stressing myself out over this when i'm not having fun with it yeah 
I mean, at that point, like, why are you even doing YouTube as a why job? Why am I even doing? Yeah, like, why am I even doing it at this point? And like I said, you gotta, you gotta know, you gotta know when to take control. Like, you have to know, say, fuck it. Like, you know, if y'all don't wanna, if y'all are, if y'all don't wanna watch this, that's fine. I'm still gonna upload it because I'm having fun with it. You yeah. know. Yeah, there will be more stuff that you guys might like. You know, you you guys aren't going anywhere. Um, yeah, like unless, unless you're unsubscribing, then I'm not I'm not worried about it at all. And if they do unsubscribe, you can't think of that as a negative. I think of that as like weeding out all the dead space. Because mm-hmm. if they because because if, if they're not in tune with what you're trying to do as a content creator, they only ever wanted you for that one thing and one thing only. Yeah, and it's like, damn. Do I want them or do I want the people that actually watch the videos? Mm-hmm. You want the people that actually watch the videos. You want the, who want, you want the people who watch more than two minutes of a video. And so... You want them. Yeah. Um, On your channel, it looked like you went back about February 2013. Um, mm-hmm. I was just curious, like, did you have other channels before? Like, is that, like, truly, like, your first? Okay, or... I did. I, um, I had, like, two channels before this one this one was just ended up being the more successful one because it depends what you think of a success because like i remember both, both of those old channels were like that was back when like a thousand subscribers were a lot mm-hmm. <laughs> that was back when like oh shit you see somebody with like 20k they were like the hottest show on the planet yeah you know and like shit like that is though, though that was when that was happening and I guess I made this channel around the exact same time as that was kind of dying out. Um, and then, I don't know, I guess I just slowly started to adapt with the YouTube with the YouTube algorithm, the landscape of things. And that's pretty much that. Okay. Um, and I know I was, I was looking through some of your videos. So like um, around early 2013 is when you started this channel, like your main channel now. And then... You hit 100K around like December 2016. So like a not really that long of a time period for that much growth. So like um, were there any like big like I don't really know about like aha moments or anything like that. But just moments where you were just like you noticed like a huge blow up in like one thing in particular. Or has it just kind of been steady the whole time? I would say steady. Yeah. Like um you never know what video is gonna do good or what series is gonna do good or whatever Mm -hmm. um i kind of i definitely pride myself in like not having to compromise uh who i am for anything uh but for sure like i kind of just was like this video might not do good but i'm gonna have fun with it anyway even if it was a pokemon video at that time pokemon was fun to me so it was like this is a rom hack or this is like a fan game or whatever let me put it up record like the entire thing just put it up for content and then you'll see it just do good and it's like oh okay (laughs) yeah all right next next one sure (laughs) okay it's weird because like my fan game rom hack content was the reason why i started like getting traction anyway Mm -hmm. but whenever like an official release would come out they never did good huh they never they never did good that is interesting. But I also think I also think it's, t- it's because I was competing with other people. Like I was competing with my friends. I was competing with uh the people who were the juggernaut channels that were just uploading Pokemon because it was new. I was competing with them, you know? Mm-hmm. And those people had a lot more fan bases than me. You know? So it's like, okay. I'm going to let them cook or whatever. I st- I still have my dubs throughout the year, you know? And it's fine. You only do you only do the new shit just to get traction anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So honestly, okay. I'll, I'll take I'll take my little subscribers off that and upload something else new or something else you know that I that will probably get me more pay pay off than that. But it's fine. Gotcha. You know, it's cool. Um, and then I was watching another video. It was like your 2018 recap, and you talked a little bit about like content drought. But as I was looking through your channel, like you seemed like pretty solidly consistent. There weren't a whole lot of gaps. Like. So, so most, one thing that I noticed whenever I'm like, you know, having these YouTubers on most of the time, if they've been around as long as like your stuff has been, there's a gap usually at some point where I feel like they're uploading, they're uploading. And then it's like, 
six months off almost, but like, I never really noticed anything like that, but I was just wondering, you know, if, if obviously I'm wrong on that, then definitely correct me. But I was just kind of wondering, like, what would you say has kept you motivated then to be that consistent for that long? Cause that was like damn impressive. As cheesy as it sounds, I like doing it. Yeah. The thought of, um, the thought of the idea behind being able to upload something on the internet and getting money off of it to the point where you have a whole apartment. Uh -huh. It's like, one, it becomes a job, but like it's just like, it's mind boggling damn near. You know, even if I don't have the numbers that uh, I wish I, I, the ones that I want, right, is still a blessing, 100%. There are still people who would who would 100% want to be where I'm at, you know. So I just took the good with the bad and just kind of just took it to the chin. That's about it. Kind of just was like, you know, th this bad shit is going to happen. Yeah. You know, it's it's going to happen. It it just is. That's how life works. But, you know, if there's one thing that has never stood me wrong, it was YouTube. You know, at the end of the day, um just YouTube and content creation, that just saved my life, dude. I there's a there's a story that I tell everybody, um, and it's really, really crazy how this stuff works. Um I graduated because of YouTube. I would not have graduated if it wasn't for it. Um, we, I would say we switched, we moved away. We had like a landlord problem and uh, we were living in the suburbs. My mom and my stepdad were having problems uh, and they moved away. They moved, we moved that ass to a whole new county and their school system obviously wasn't the same. So obviously some credits had to get taken away. Mm -hmm. And so I went from being able to graduate from my old school to not being able to graduate at the new one. So I had to, out of nowhere, come up with like 15 uh, credits in the span of a year. And they give you five, they give you five classes and then you have to do like a couple of night school stuff. But even then, like with the five periods that I had per semester, per, yeah, per semester and the, plethora of like after school classes it still would have not would not have been enough for me to graduate on time without having to repeat a year and so at that point I kind of just kind of just like gave up on school I kind of was just like I just didn't want to just you know I didn't care about it anymore it was just like why am I even bothering doing this if I'm gonna have to like repeat uh, um repeat a year with my brother yeah who's like one year older than when you're younger than me and I'm like, if I'm going to have to sit back and just fucking uh, do a whole um, year over again, why am I even bothering to push myself this hard? Um, and then something happened near, I want to say the last like, two or three months uh, of the school year. My uh, my counselor was like, hey, uh, you don't have enough credits. You know, is there anything we can do? Get it, yada. I'm like, I don't know what you want me to do. You know, I can do summer school. That, that's pretty much it. And he asked me, he said, uh, do you have a job? And I said, I mean, I get paid through YouTube. I don't know if you would consider that like a job or not. And he was like, show me. And so I showed him like the YouTube channel at this point in time. I had like 2,000 videos. Um, I had like all my payment documents and shit on like another website. And he was like, so you get paid for this? I'm like, yeah. He's like, how much do you like get paid? Like, how much do you like work on this or whatever? I said, I don't know. A video takes like a good like 30 minutes, hour to record or whatever. And so he said, okay, this works. You ever heard of job credits? I said, no. And so he's like, okay, for every certain amount of hours, you get a credit. So I said, okay, what are you trying to say here? He said, okay, print out all your videos Big ass packet, mind you. <laughs> Print out all your videos, and for every page of videos, we'll give you a credit. So every, you know, on the video manager, 
they only show you 30 videos uh, per page, uh -huh. right? So I said, okay. I print it all, print it all, print it all. Mind you, I had like 2,000 something videos. I don't know how many pages got printed out. I do know it was a fucking shit ton because the packet was thick as fuck. But for every page, I got a credit. So I went from 30 credits to 55. The requirement was 45 to graduate on time and be able to walk the stage. Damn. And there you go. Fucking drop the mic. <laughs> and there you go. Damn, I didn't know that that was a thing. I mean, I guess neither. I didn't either. <laughs> I didn't either. I didn't either. And so, it, 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 so it's, it's crazy because like at that time, YouTube was something that like my mom did not like me doing. She uh -huh. kind of just did not like me. Um, did not like me putting so much priority on YouTube. Uh, but YouTube, I mean, for that time was like an outlet for me. You know, it, it was it was like a damn like you know, fuck like if if my grades are shit. At least I'm getting money. And at this point in time, I was helping around the house. I was putting uh, a lot of my, like food on the counters and shit and the tables or whatever. I was I was helping mom with bills. I was doing a lot of things, but they just did not like the idea of putting so much uh, stock into something so temporary at the time, yeah. something so unreliable, which is fair. You know, looking back at it, it's fair as fuck, but... You know, just looking at it and how everything played out, it's like, damn, like, doing all right. <laughs> this shit worked. Y'all always say this shit. This shit's working. You know, it, it it works. So, I don't know. I guess now it's like, now it's like trying to stick with everything, trying to just make sure that uh, I don't let this blessing go to waste. Yeah, at the time, you know, like there weren't as many success stories from YouTube, so I don't blame them. You know, it, it does make sense. I would be iffy about it. I would be like, nah, you should probably like go to school, you know, blah, 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 get a degree, do something that like had at the time a higher success rate. But I mean, now like plenty of people like have made content creation in some way, shape or form their career, whether they, they're more like more so like influencers or, you know, content creators or something like it's even editors are yeah. making a lot of money. Yeah. And, it, and it, it's important that that type of shit is important. People to understand like mm -hmm. you 100% can make a job out of anything you want. Cause a, you just can't a lot of big YouTubers. Yeah. They talk about like, they've got a team of, you know, sometimes it's like four or five people. Sometimes it's like 30, 40, 50 people that work under them doing all kinds of shit. You know, man, I, I told myself if I ever get that big, I'm hiring all my friends. Yeah. Literally. Like if I, if I ever get to like, I guess like, uh, like God willing PewDiePie level, <laughs> um, I a hundred percent cause all my friends do something creative. Mm -hmm. They all do. I know like three friends that know how to edit gracefully better than I do. I would 100% hire them. I have like hella artist friends. I 100% would buy them out. Make sure like, you know, and just make sure they're good. Yeah. You know, you know, they're, they're, if that, if at that level of like notoriety, what good is a couple thousand dollars for people to live off of? Mm -hmm. They're They're putting money, they're putting time and shit into you. Oh, hey, this video right here. I just made a good two or three K off of it. <laughs> cool. I'm going to put that shit into my artist friend. Make sure she's able to, you know, eat or whatever. Mm -hmm. or he's able to be good or whatever. And just putting more back into my friends or whatever. Like, I, I know people that make music, you know, have them do custom shit for me. I know people that do commissions, uh, make them make custom brand art, you know, get a LLC, get a, get a, uh, a copyright joint actually get branding going on. Yeah. You know, I think that's like a, it, it's, it's a, it's a goal of mine to definitely put back into my friends and, um, definitely, um, you know, just be able to, you know, give back to them and help them out. Cause it's definitely like, I feel like it's a lonely, it's a really lonely, um, lifestyle being like a content creative and, uh, keeping people around. Sometimes people, just grow apart. People just grow uh, away from people, whether it's, you know, peaceful or negatively. Um, and so it's always good to give back to the people who were there when others could have been mm -hmm. and should have been, you know, and making sure they know that they're appreciated and they're good, you know? That's awesome. And that's, that's at the end of the day, I feel like that's just what I ideally want to do.
Because there are a lot of people who should have been uh, for me, I feel like. And I'm not saying I'm entitled to anybody's time, you know, and entitled to anybody's like life or whatever. But I feel like when you put so much uh, energy and so many words and so many praise into people and vice versa, the least you can do is be there when I'm having my episodes or when I'm going through my little ruts or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. And there's people who've done more for me. And I've known them less time than people who I've known since I was like 15. Yeah, absolutely. So it's like, damn, they're going to get the fruits of the labor before anybody else. And anybody who feels negative towards that can eat a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck them. I, I don't, I, it's not my fault, you know? Yeah. No. And uh, talking about like your, your friends being talented and everything, that's really, that's really great. You know, just kind of like making use of them eventually to, you know, make sure, like you said, like it's a win-win, you get some talented people that you can trust. And also they've got a job. Like, I mean, it's literally a win-win. Um, and so on top of YouTube, you, you do a couple other things as well. Like of course, streaming and you've got the, the Royal round table podcast that looks like, you know, it started mm -hmm. up um, and, and all that. Now you've also got like a, um, some merch is that stuff that like you've gotten commissioned by them or do you design that yourself or like kind of what I, I, I have, like I said, I just know a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of friends. It's crazy. Cause like, uh, my sub discord actually turned into like a place where people just give me money to a place, you know, of creative people. Like uh -huh. I, we sit, we sit in, uh, the call sometime just, brainstorming ideas brainstorming thumbnails brainstorming um just just a lot of things that we just sit there and just you know just talk about shit and we we manifest that stuff into what you see whether it's your cup of tea is not my problem or not but people you know people seem to enjoy the the, the few people seem to enjoy and i guess that's all that matters to me is at least there's some people versus none yeah, you know, and um, I was listening to the the Royal Roundtable, and uh, I believe it was in episode six. Um, I I had found out I didn't know this about you until like just a little bit before we started. I was kind of doing some last minute, you know, research and just kind of like, all right, you know, what some other things. Um, and and I believe it was episode six. You had talked a little bit about I I didn't know that you knew like Nappy and all these other people that were in that whole situation. And so I was in that whole situation. Yeah. And I was, uh, those were my, um, those were my peers, uh, for the early segment of my YouTube career. And so obviously, you know, it, it's kind of beating it with a dead horse of, of talking about necessarily like, oh, this is what happened. You know, if, if you don't know what happened, like, look it up, you know, I'm not going to like definitely go look it up at this point, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'm not. I'm not going into all that. And, and even the the whole comeback thing, that's almost at this point beating it with a dead horse. But I was just kind of curious, you know, from your standpoint or, or viewpoint, however much you're willing to, to express on this, how do you think that something like that has affected the community since then? You know, like I said, not necessarily just like, oh, this is what happened or, or whatever, but like now, now we're looking at it a couple months down the line, you know, I mean... Stuff like that in general, whether it, you, you want to mostly reference that in particular instance, but things like that, how, how do you think that that affects the community or, or has it affected you or your community, if, if at all? It, um, your idols aren't perfect. I think that's um, the biggest lesson from that situation. There's a lot of people were crushed about it. I was crushed about it because that was somebody that I looked up to from a close distance. Like, that was my nigga. That was, like, somebody that I considered, like, an older brother. Mm -hmm. um, and just so to kind of just see that and know that, it's kind of just, like, he had his demons. You know, he had his um, his things that, you know, he, he couldn't tell anybody. And, you know, it just goes to show that, like, the people you look up to definitely... Do that shit with a grain of salt. Definitely, like, look at them as a human being first before you try to idolize them. I see a lot of people uh, express disappointment in that situation, whether it's towards him or his friends or shit like that. But, you know, I always say this, like, it could have been anybody. It couldn't have been, you know, nappy. It couldn't have been, uh, it, it could have been somebody else. 
it could have been somebody with a bigger following. It could have been somebody with a, a smaller following that there's people that are doing the things that he's doing. And these people are people with platforms. These people are people with uh, children and people that look up to them and stuff like that. And it's just best that, you know, you dead ass keep, keep, just, just keep a level head when it comes to making these people, people you look up to and just make sure that if you're going to look up to these people, make sure it's, only the traits that you that they exhibit and not the person themselves because that person will have uh some some shit that you just will never see coming you know like when that shit came out it was like holy shit this is somebody that just uploaded pokemon videos mm -hmm. you know he had a charismatic he had a charismatic like uh attitude about him he was like a he was like a um a enigma damn near for some people. He was like a light of hope for some people. Um, and it was like, damn, to see that happen and to see so many people be in denial because of who he was to them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like, I get it, y'all. Like, I, I understand that he's helped out during these troubled times, but that's the reason why you cannot put these people on these pedestals. If you're going to idolize these people... Idolize the traits that you admire and implement that into yourself. And that is as far as it's going to go. You know? Yeah. You shouldn't have to worship them. You shouldn't have to be that in denial when they do bad shit or their their demons come out or their skeletons come out the closet. And you look dumb for still supporting them and still being in denial. That's just... Come on. Like, like some of... You, you don't... I, I never want to be 26 year old caping for a YouTube pedophile. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's weird. Yeah, that that's what's that's weird as hell. Blown my mind is, you know, I get it. Like the the shock initially, of course, of like, oh shit, this has been going on. But the amount of support that stayed there, you know what I mean? It's it's mind boggling, but I, I've never really thought about it the way that you put it of just like kind of putting people on a pedestal or like, you know, having these idols, like, you know, that it, it's really almost scary to think about, like, you know, m maybe you could imagine like if, you know, you, you did something just terribly fucked up and like the, the amount of people that would stick around with you because they enjoy your videos, they enjoy your content, they enjoy you and all that stuff but it's like it's kind of scary to have that much power in a sense you know mm -hmm. it's it, it's wild to think about but i've never really and i'm really glad that you said it the way and put it the way that you did because literally i i guess that's the the answer or the information that i was hoping to get out of that question but i didn't even know i was just like man i just really am curious what your thoughts were on that but i what what has been blowing my mind is why there's that support. And I think you hit the, the fucking nail on the head, my man. Like, it's just literally like he was an idol to some people, you know, and it's hard. You don't want to you don't want to be wrong about your idol. You don't want to, you know, this guy that you've supported so vehemently for like years, maybe. And you don't want to go back and be like, oh, no, like, sorry. You know, it's it's really hard. But, man, I know some people that put at least a good couple grand into him. Yeah. And when that shit came out, they felt they were devastated. Mm -hmm. There, there's since that time, there's been like maybe three suicide attempts Jesus. that I know of because of who they were to these people. I know about like uh, a couple of people I've been in arguments with that were just so in denial until I did like that podcast episode. Um, when that shit came out, that was definitely like the eye opener for some people, mm -hmm. but. It's just weird. A lot of people just a lot of people just think this shit is just YouTube shit. Like, no, like these are real life people. I know these people. You know, I I, I met these people like and spent time with motherfuckers. The fact that you can sit here and tell me that I don't know these people is weird to me. Yeah. Somebody who just watches him from a video, like that's weird. That's weird. That's so weird to me, dude. But it's just like, you know, like you said, nobody wants to be wrong about the people they look up to. Yeah. And, and in that podcast episode, like I could like hear, especially at the beginning of it, man, like I could like see it in your face, hear it in your voice. I was like, this dude, like you were very passionate about what you were talking about. And like, I, I was just like, like you said, for one, I'm like, nobody wants to talk about that shit. Mm -hmm. Nobody. It's like nobody 
for me, for me, it was like that's somebody that I really, I, I like I said, I, I saw him as like an older brother. Like it was like he taught me things that I would have never known if it wasn't for him, you know. And to this day, there are things that uh, that I just would not have known had it not been from him. There's a lot of, there's a lot of like, uh, there's a lot of uh, self. There's a lot of like fragments of him that I kind of implement into my own person that like were just let down when that shit came out. And it was kind of just like, how the fuck could you? Mm -hmm. Really? Where that whole time I was talking about that stuff, I was really disappointed. I was just like, why am I talking about this? My first video on the my first video on the topic when the shit came out, I was like, my first couple sentences. I never thought I would be talking about this type of situation, about these type of people, about the people I'm going to be talking about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Never, never would have thought that that was going to be like a a, a, a thing. It just, it just wildest dreams to me. And it's crazy because I look at it now, it's like I was like 16 when I met him. Mm -hmm. I thought... Talking to older people were just cool. You know what I'm saying? Right. I thought it was cool as shit. I was like, hey, these are people that, you know, they, they may be older than me, but they, like, respect me enough to kind of just talk to me, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, to be, for me, I was the youngest person in the group. So for me to be, like, the youngest and seeing all these grown-ass people um, handle their, like, um, handle their drama and handle their lives in, like, such a weird way... It's like, I look at that shit, like, I, I don't want to be like that. You know, like, I don't want to, I, I I look at their situations and be like, okay, I'm not going to do this. Or if this ever happens, I'm not going to do that. Or if this opportunity comes up, I'm going to take it when they didn't. You know, like, shit like that. It's like, damn, fuck, you know? So it, now that I'm an adult now, it's like, when that shit came to light, it was like, damn, I kind of see what the fuck was going on now. Why there was this weird tension in the group towards the tail end. Why people were so against one another during some sections of the friendship. I get it now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's not just as buddy-buddy as I thought it was. And so that just, the shit coming out just kind of confirmed it. And as that shit was coming out, a lot more information started to come out. And at that point, it was just like, damn. Yeah. This shit wasn't, this shit was not sunshine and rainbows as, as I thought. Like Pokemon videos and yeah. Yeah. Like, I just want to upload videos. Like, nigga, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know it was like that. Like, what's up? Yeah. Nah. I, and, you know, that's why, you know, as much as, you know, as as much as, um, I'm I, as much as I don't you know, want to be associated with that man. It's like, you know, I'm not going to sit here and cap like my whole early uh, YouTube shit would not have been anything without him. I would not have known uh, how to edit videos, how to uh, title videos at that moment. I would not have known to do a lot of the things like I would not be here if it wasn't for him. Mm -hmm. I'd be making trash ass videos I wouldn't be so gung-ho on quality. I wouldn't be so gung-ho in work work ethic and shit if it was not for him. So it's like, damn, dog, you really had to fuck it up for everybody because now you have these people who don't want to fuck with us even more now because we don't fuck with you anymore. Mm -hmm. And they don't fuck with you either. <laughs> you know, right. so it's like, th thank you. We just we we all just lost something. That 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 aren't just friends and shit. Cause obviously nobody wants to be associated with that. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, cool. Not only are we losing some of our best fucking friends, we're also losing uh, consistent subscribers and shit, and people that we see in comment section or we used to see in the comment section. But then, like when that shit came out, it's like, damn. Since that shit happened, I fell off, and it's like, damn. I, that really does fucking suck. I think if you you can be if you have the ability to drop somebody like that given 
you know, what they've done for you in the past, then I think nobody has any goddamn excuse to, you know, like I get it, you know, oh, you, you've enjoyed their content and all that stuff. But when somebody does something that fucked up, you know, I think it's really interesting that you're able to, even though you, you know, like you said, you're, you're willing to admit that there was a time when they meant a lot and they, you know, helped you out and they've, you know, influenced you in, in ways and all that. But if, if even you're willing to, after that, if you're willing to be like, no, after that, it, it's kind of done so, man, you know, you, you fucked up and, and all that, then yeah, I think that should be an example for anybody else who, y- you know, is, is having a little bit of trouble dropping their, their idol or, or somebody that they have looked up to. But you know, it's, I, I, um, I've accepted like like since that podcast, I've accepted that there will always be people that no matter what information you give to them, no matter what, uh, no matter how many truths you feed to them, it's not gonna be enough. Yeah, and you know it's it's you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. You know, and that's. That's it. Like that's if they want to support it, fine. By all means, go ahead. But I refuse to, I refuse to re. I refuse to go into rebuilding my content, rebuilding who I am, and rebuilding uh myself as a person and as a channel, and be associated with that type of shit. Because nobody wants to be like, oh shit. Let's say, for instance, like a year or two from now, I I blow up or some shit, and I have like five hundred thousand subscribers or whatever. Hey, did you know this guy still talks to Nappy? Who's the King Nappy? Search him up. Excuse me? Oh, I don't fuck with this guy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This nigga's a a pedophile. He still searches with him? Oh, dog, I'm unsubscribing. Nobody wants that. Yeah. And like I said, yeah, like, you know, he meant something to me back then. But, like, I got to know the pros and the cons. And to be honest, like he, there was a lot more cons to keeping him around than there were pros. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting thing too. Yeah. I never really thought about it just from, uh, y- you know, uh, it's bad for business. It is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, simple so, as I that. So I mean, hey. So it makes sense. If people want to be blindsided to that shit, they can have those. Mm-hmm. Those weird ass uh, let's plays that he still makes now. It's not. It's, it's whatever. I think what shocked me was uh, was the lack of acknowledgement. There was, you know, there was no old school. He's not going to make a video. Yeah. I think that's what everybody's he's, waiting he's for. He's not going to make a video. Mm-hmm. He's not going to make one. He's going to act like it's it never existed. He's going to continue to lose subscribers. He's going to keep his consistent 10 to 15,000 viewers. And that's going to be it. Like that's as long as he gets money out of it, he's going to be fine with that. Mm hmm. I'm going to just say, I'm going to just, I, I said this before and I said this again. I'm like, there's a reason why he came back and didn't talk about it, but continue to put a lot more ads in videos than he normally does. Yeah. Just kind of like, Hey, I'm not going to draw attention to this. I'm not going to act like it didn't happen, but I'm also not going to rem- to not make money off right. of it. Cause I know there's people that still want me back. It's like, come on dog. Like any, any grown ass person can tell you that he's definitely doing this shit for money, oh, yeah. but it's whatever. I'm not going to tell grown people how to spend their time and shit. It is what it is. Yeah. Well, that's the bulk of what I had as far as all that. I I, I want to end this on a better, more positive <laughs> note. Let's, right? let's bring some, some fucking sunshine back in this shit. So one thing I did want to ask you too. Um, so... You know, you've been pretty consistent doing YouTube for a while. Give me, mm. you know, whether you're thinking of just one or maybe a handful, whatever. You know, you can go as long or as short with this as you want. We, we ain't in no rush or whatever. But what what's some of uh, your favorite moments throughout your, your time here on YouTube as a creator? I got a lot. <laughs> um, go for it. I guess I'll just do one. Uh, do one a, I'll do a couple. Um... My friend Num Nexus, uh, at the time, this is back when Pokemon X and Y came out, and uh, he got his capture card delayed. But what happened was his laptop had kind of just gave out. He had like a shitty ass laptop, and it gave out. And me and my friends, we did a donation stream. It was like a whole, 
it was gonna be a whole twenty four hour donation stream, but we got the money in less than in less than a couple of hours actually, and it was all for him. I I did ask was like you know what let's do a donation stream for him, and like you know it was me and like four or five other friends, and we just kind of just we we were gonna we gave away Pokemon. We uh made donation goals extensive. We we did like um oh we get we hit like this goal and we'll do like a double battle. We'll do like a multi battle with viewers, shit mm-hmm. like that. And uh, we made the money and I, we got him a fire ass lap laptop that he still has. He still has that shit to this day actually. And uh, that's just that was the crazy crazy moment because that was the first time I ever did like a donation stream. That was the first time I ever did like anything for anybody else that wasn't like um. That wasn't like I don't know. It, it it's materialistic, sure, but I didn't have to make that donation stream. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't have to. I didn't have to do that at all. I, I just did it out of the kindness of my heart, and I was like, you know, I just feel like you know, it was it shit. You never it never hurts to try. Yeah, you know, it never hurts to try to you know if you believe in something, it never hurts to to give it a go, you know, and see how the universe takes it, and that's it. Uh, another one was, um, when I hit a hundred K, I was like, you know, coming from somebody who used to look at a hundred K, like you were famous when I hit it, it didn't really hit. Like I thought it was going to like, like I hit it and it was like, holy shit, it's a great moment. Mm-hmm. Everybody's saying, thank you. Yada, yada. But it was like, damn, see, not, I kind of want more now because the landscape of YouTube has changed. A hundred K is still a small subscribe, a small YouTuber. Mm-hmm. It really is. That's what people People, uh, you know, they see the number and it's just like, holy shit, how are you, how are you this? And it's like, dog, like, if you look at YouTube as a whole, 100,000 subscribers is nothing compared to the 500,000s, the million subscriber channels, the the guys that get the views crazy or the guys that don't. Like, you got to, it, it's only half the battle is the sub count, you know? And so... Hitting that was a uh, prolific moment for me because it was a great moment, yes, but at the same time, it was one of those I'm still not done yet moments where it's like, I still want more. I still want to do a lot for myself. I still want to keep going and keep pushing and keep experiencing all these new things and keep experiencing these new people and everything. I just want I just want more. And that's where the addiction to more came from. Just growing in general. I just like that shit. I like it with a passion. I like results. I like that. I just do. I beat myself over over, uh, over numbers sometimes when it's something I'm really, really passionate about and it just doesn't stick. It's like, damn, dude. See, now I gotta, I gotta, you know, I gotta pull the plug on it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I have no issues with it because it's just like if people don't want to watch it, they won't miss it, you know. It hurts, though. <laughs> it definitely does hurt. <laughs> I I talked about that a little um, bit with Afro where it was like sometimes you know we we as creators try something a little different and it doesn't hit and and we're at first we're like no 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 they just didn't get it they didn't understand what I what my artistic vision was and sometimes sometimes it just isn't it you know what I mean sometimes it hurts yeah. bro man I can sit here and just be like dog like I'm about to make the best video of my fucking life I'm going to record the video, take that shit out, add the shit, boom, boom, boom. Next thing you know, it goes live, and it just doesn't stick. It's like, damn, uh-huh. dude. Like, if this shit would have hit, this shit would have been like the catalyst for something bigger. But right. don't, you know, it's just, it's just, I don't know. It's just, it's a work in progress. Dude. Be like you that gotta sometimes. Know what it works. Um... And I guess another moment, um, 2018, mm-hmm. the whole year, 2018, the entire year for me was like really, really dark. Uh, I almost killed myself in 2018. Um, and it was just a very, it was like a, it was like a, a, a crazy mix of like a lot of personal shit mixed in with a lot of YouTube stuff. It was just a bad like balance to where it was like even the outlet wasn't working you know even even like the youtube creative space wasn't helping me um find some type of like happiness in self you know 
And it just was like, shit, like what the fuck's going on? Um, and I bounced back from that shit crazy heavy. And I was just able to kind of just, I just, I feel a lot more confident. I took that moment in life and kind of just twisted it and won. I just won. Yeah. Internally. Like, it was just like, I just feel, I guess I feel a lot more confident in self, in content, in life. Um, I feel invincible. You know, I always, I always say this. I'm like, if you can beat yourself, you can beat the world. Cause you know, all you go through life seeing everybody else and seeing everybody uh, else succeed and everything like that. But it's like the moment you start to like compare yourself and beat yourself up over your insecurities, your, uh, your flaws and everything like that. It's like, that's when like the real battle begins. I feel like, um, and the moment you, and obviously it's not like, you know, it's not like a, it's not like a permanent victory, you know, but I won that battle and that battle when it got that close, right, I was able to win that. Meaning, I see no reason why I can never win the war. And so now, I look at 2019 and 2020 as a means of rebuilding. As a means of uh, being more open about the shit that I like. Being more open with the people that I... Uh, that I in, that I let in my life and letting them, you know, letting them, you know, letting them really just know that I appreciate the fuck out of them. I um, mean, appreciating them, you know, it's like you can say, but doing is a whole other thing. And, you know, just putting actions behind those words, a hundred percent can help somebody's day, can help somebody's um, life in some way, shape or form. And I, I, I have zero reason why I shouldn't you know, if my friends do this much for me and they don't know about it, why can't I? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why Why should I not express that to them so they know? And that that's, that's, that's just what that is. So I think 2018 as a whole was definitely a life. It was it was it was probably the worst year of my fucking life, dude. It was crazy. But I won. I overcame that shit. Um, and. I look at I look at I look at that shit like I'm invincible now, you know. Obviously not, you know. I'm not egotistical on some other shit, but like you know, like just like if I can beat, you know, myself and my darkness, it's like I can. The world ain't shit to me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like fuck it, I'm good, you know. And so now, um, I live my life damn near on sage mode. Damn. Consistently. <laughs> that's awesome. And that's it. I'm well, I'm glad, man, that you you won that and and you've come out the way you are with it. Cause I mean, you know, watching your videos, um, I know earlier when I asked you like how you've stayed consistent and you said like, you know, it sounds corny, but but you um but you just enjoy it. No, it's very, very apparent watching your videos. But that that's really great, you know, and that's that's inspirational or it should be anyway. God damn it. <laughs> um, to anybody who, who might be going through some shit, you know, to see how you are, you know, right now in your videos and all that, and just know, like, I think that that's good for other people to know too, is like, Hey, these, everybody's been there. You know what I mean? Even the people of course, like, that seem like they got it all They're They're good. Everybody's had, had their, their time, man. So, and it's not, and it's up to you, you know, it's how you, it's how you take it's how you take those down moments and it's how you um how you battle those demons that really uh cultivate you as a person in the future like how you end up in the future when you're you 20 years old is not going to be you 30 years old and it's how you go about living your life um and it's how you go about accepting the L's and embracing them and that's the one thing I that's the one thing people have to learn to understand is it's okay to embrace your downfall. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It's okay. It's not the end of the world and it's not the end of you. And if anything, the best thing you can do is make sure that you learn from it and other people learn from your example, which is why I'm so it's so easy to talk about it now. 
It's so easy to talk about. I used to actually burst into tears talking about it. I don't do it no more. That's good, man. Two thumbs up. Because I know somebody's going to receive it, and they're going to be like, okay, you know, the, something's there, you mm -hmm. know? And that's all that matters, is that you leave, like, a, a trail uh, with your story at the end of it all. You know, I think uh, there was a question uh, on my podcast. It was like, what do you want people to take uh, from you after you're done? And I said, you know, I never compromised who I was. I just grew up. And that's really just it. And just knowing who I used to be and just looking back and being like, I did a really fucking good job being where I'm at now. And that's it. Learn to reflect and learn to embrace everything. I think that's the thing about it. We try to, we rush through life so much. We try to look at everything and we, we, we damn near kick ourselves in the fucking foot because we failed. It's like, relax. Like it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's, it's okay. We're going to be okay. You're going to be all right. And even if you're not all right, you have people, a hundred percent, you have people who do give a fuck about you. They will make sure you're okay. They, they will make sure you're fine. Yeah. And that's literally that's literally it. That those are my biggest uh my biggest moments. Yeah. Those are my biggest moments. More to come, of course, but as of right now, those for sure. Hey guys, how's it hanging everybody? This is Storm Pow, and I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Storm Pod as much as Sacred and I had fun recording this. So as always, guys, if you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to check out Sacred. He is on YouTube, and he's also got his podcast, The Royal Round Table. So be sure to look him up. He's also on Twitch. Be sure to check out him. The links will be in the description of whatever platform it is that you're enjoying this on. I think everything supports descriptions. It is 2020 after all. So be sure to check out the links in the description to go find him online. And also be sure to check out my Twitch live stream at twitch.tv slash the storm pal, because we do these live streams every week. So doing that, you get to listen to the podcast about two days sooner, and you get to interact with myself and the guest before and after the show. So it's a great time. Be sure to check all that out. And as always, be sure to rate this video if you're watching it, or also rate the podcast as a whole. If you're listening to us on audio, be sure to subscribe or follow or whatever the hell the platform is that you're enjoying this on support. So be sure to do all that for us. We really appreciate the support. And if you want to show a little bit of extra support, you can always be sure to check out our merch at streamlabs.com slash the storm pal slash merch. Get yourself a coffee mug, a t-shirt, whatever. I just want you guys to be clothed and caffeinated. That is my primary and dare I say only concern as a content creator. But anyway, guys, all that aside, I do want to thank you so much for tuning into this episode. I hope you have a nice day and goodbye. All the music used in this podcast is by Kevin McLeod. Be sure to check out his royalty-free music at incompetech.com.